looked at Peter Grimes by Benjamin Britten, has um, a huge number of challenges. And the first one that you'll encounter is the opening shift, G flat to B flat, um, but over the, the span of a tenth. There's two ways to go about this, um, maybe three ways if you have a small bass and very big hands. But for me, there's two ways. You either go on the, the D string, <laughs> and you shift, or you go on the A string for the G flat, <laughs> and you shift F. Of course, the second shift is smaller in terms of distance, but you have to cross an extra string, um, which is why I prefer to stay on the D string uh, for the first bar, um, and of course the second bar, which is the same. There's another benefit to staying on the, the first two strings as well, um, because at the end, the, the second half of bar one and two, we have a slur, and I personally find it much easier to connect the two slurred notes, again, the span of a tenth, <laughs> if I'm only crossing uh, one string at a time. Um, I also like to hear a certain amount of portamento um, within that shift. There's another advantage as well, uh, because we have the same music twice, uh, two bars in a row, but we have two different bowings. And for me, it's very important that we don't hear the difference between the two bowings. Um, for instance, the tendency is to have a very strong down bow, especially with the French bow, and, and a less powerful up bow. And if we have that in this excerpt, which is also in fortissimo, um, we lose we lose a certain amount of the character, uh, and it will it will be noticeable to anybody listening that you're using a different bowing uh, between the two bars. Um, I'll just demonstrate uh, the importance of really having a strong connection and a good contact point at the tip for bar two. <laughs> we have tenuto lines and a crescendo. Now, Britain doesn't actually tell us to drop down from the fortissimo dynamic, but I think it's, uh, it's a given uh, because we have this crescendo that goes to the espressivo marking in the, in the middle of bar three. Uh, that sounds like this. And there's another thing I choose to do here, um, which is to break up the slur. Uh, with an up bow. And the reason I do that is so that the second note in bar four comes in the lower part of the bow. So I'm going to play bars three and four again. Another thing to be aware of um, is the uh, six bars from the end of this passage. Um, we have the same music that we've already discussed, but this time we have a dotted minim with the crescendo going right the way through to the diminuendo uh, four bars before the end. Um, that sounds like this. I like to use vibrato and contact point to, uh, to make this crescendo. I come a little bit nearer the bridge um, and I add the vibrato towards the upper half of the bow. Then jumping forward to the last four bars, we have very similar music to what we've already discussed, but it's actually a little easier because the key changes. But I do the same bowing every time, and then I really try and make a good piano dynamic at the end, uh, and then it's very important to me to hear the diminuendo in the last two bars. And just remember that the music doesn't actually stop in the last bar of this excerpt. It does carry on, and uh, so there's no need to hold it too long, but it's really nice just to fade out. I'll just play the last four bars. <laughs> 